Okay, so let's talk about, uh, let's revisit object ID. We talked about a little bit in the previous session and then we'll talk about Bason as well, Bason, Bason, whatever the way you call it. So object ID is something that identifies any document in MongoDB uniquely. Every document that you create in a particular collection will have an object ID. Either you assign it or if you don't, then MongoDB will assign uh, the document a unique ID by itself okay now if you look at the object ID ideally it's uh, so it is it is supposed to be of 12 bytes okay not 12 characters but 12 bytes so it, it looks something like this right and it's made up of 12 bytes and uh, these bytes actually store bits and pieces of information so this information includes information about the timestamp when this particular document was created. Okay. It also includes uh, the timestamp for machine ID, process ID, and counter. So a combination of this will actually give you a kind of a unique ID. So even if you are creating like bunch of documents from the same machine, from the same process, at the same time on the MongoDB database, even though the IDs will be different something or something else will always be different you know like for example counter could be different for uh, the particular example that I mentioned that where you got uh, a lot of documents being pushed onto a particular instance of MongoDB from the same machine same process pretty much at the same time there's very unlikely that the object ID will be the same but just to be safe we should try to create an object id in the client side but it's totally fine this that there's very less probability that mongodb will mess up the object id it's, it's quite quite rare but it could happen that is it and uh, then let's talk about bison so bison is the binary encoded json so when MongoDB stores any particular document, any particular JSON document, it stores it into the binary encoded form of the JSON and it calls it BSON format. Now it's different from uh, the traditional JSON that we know. So JSON actually stores data only in numbers and strings. So if you any if you ever seen any JSON document, it, it, it can't tell if something is a date object, okay? Uh, date is just a string in JSON or if it's there, if it's a floating point number or an integer it doesn't differentiate between the two it's, it's just a number right whereas BSON actually has some additional types int long date floating point and that way you can see how it can be useful right doing all kinds of comparison and and the filtering and all right so uh, it's pretty handy that way you don't have to do any kind of you know type conversion explicitly uh, the types are there in uh, the uh, Bison format itself. Uh, it's got four types and those are the ones that are available in this particular driver as well and we'll see some example of that as well. So Bison.d is called a document, a D for document here and it's supposed to be an ordered document. So usually your document is kind of like the key value pairs, right? But sometimes you have a need for these keys uh, to be in an ordered fashion and I can't think of an think of an example right now, but uh, sometimes some kind of command specific uh, uh, Applications where you actually are storing a set of commands, you know, let's say uh, in, in the keys and the values right and they have to be executed in, in, in a specific order, right? So it, it's very important that you actually store them in that specific order any new command lets it to be appended at the end and not somewhere in the middle right so an example of that uh, in a scenario like that you want to use basin.d object okay when you uh, use your uh, when you sort of use your struct to be stored right then you got basin.m which is supposed to be a map and it's unordered map your keys and your keys could be out of order of course your keys will be map to your value but they the keys would be out of order they could be out of order okay it's not necessary for them to maintain the order 
Now here's an example of basin.d and here's an example of basin.m. Uh, they actually are the same kind of objects. So ideally, what this is telling you is that there's a key and there's a value. Although it looks more like an array when you look at it, but uh, it is a key and a value. So every key and value combination would be enclosed by one set of curly braces. Okay. Uh, so inside the curly braces, you would only have two values. Okay, two things. One of them would be the key, another one would be the value. So for example, if, if I have another example here, that would be something like foo and bar. Okay, so that would be equivalent to like foo dot bar. Okay, so that would be key and value, something that we know uh, is a proper thing to do in JSON, right? But so this is just a different format that you might want to get used to, and then you have the outer curly braces to enclose it. Unordered map uh, based on dot m is gonna look pretty much similar to the JSON. So you got m and then you got curly braces. And if you got any more of these things coming up, then they will be like this. All right. So key dot key colon value comma key colon value and uh, just just some JSON similar style here. Okay. If you got an array, then you're gonna use basin.a and then it's Eric, Kyle, and a list of things here, right? And basin.e, I don't quite, uh, you know, I, I don't think that it's got many usages. Uh, we might use it, but it's not used that frequently, but it, it's usually used as an element inside basin.d. Usually, mostly you'll be going with basin.m and a, a combination of them, Sometimes based on D and sometimes uh, based on E as well. All right. So uh, where are these actually used? So in our previous example, we saw that we had. Uh, let me comment these things out. So we had this uh, trimmer or this iPhone 10 that we were persisting into our MongoDB database, right? So it was a struct. It was an initialized struct, and we were just directly storing it into the database, right? But instead of doing that, there could be another way to do it, and that is using basin.d. All right, so this is our ordered list. Okay, so what it's doing here is uh, it's actually storing a particular collection here, a particular document here. So it's called name, surname, hobbies, as keys, Eric Cartman, and another array as a value for this particular key here. Okay. And uh, then you got basin.m, which is going to be an unordered list, although you won't be able to see that when it gets stored in the MongoDB because it's a very small map and it's going to keep the order in that case. But just so you know that it's going to be an unordered map, an unordered document. Okay, so let me just save this and let me run this. So, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, okay. So when I go back here, I have my products and then tronics, and I got my document here, all right? When I come in this out, and I put this in, I get another document of the same type. So you see that in terms of values, these two are completely identical. Although now we can clearly see that this was out of order, right? So hobbies actually got placed at the at the top. I wasn't expecting this to happen, but it, it's so nice that it did. So I can show it to you guys. So uh, here it maintained the order that I was I had in the code here, right? For basin.d, but for basin.m, it actually just decided to have the order that it likes. So it put the hobbies at the top and that could sometimes cause havoc if you have if you if the order matters for you. Right? So uh, that's an example of based on the D, M and A. We also saw an example of that here, right? And uh, just like last time we talked about so object object ID does have a timestamp so we can print it out and that's what we are doing here. Alright? 
So that was it for today's session and in the next session we'll, we'll start talking about how to use different methods here. We are inserting just one document but we can insert many documents, we can update, delete and create uh, documents as well. So that's, it's got multiple methods and they are easy to guess just by the name of it and then after that we'll also look at the operators. Uh, to, to be able to do all kinds of filtering that we would be doing eventually in our application. So till then, see you.